Have you guys seen the conservative twins? Th these guys are are an absolute anomaly to me. They would fit right into like the SCP Foundation as some sort of anomalous entity. I don't know if you don't know what I'm talking about. Like, we're just going to watch this video. You'll see what I mean. It's like disturbing <laughs> <laughs> to know people out, out there actually call themselves progressive and they think this way. They're actually arguing over topics that's already been settled hundreds of thousands of years ago. <laughs> so uh, this video is about um, progressive TikToker says biological women is a meaningless phrase. Biological woman is a meaningless phrase. And to these guys, they, they're they saying this is something that has been settled. Uh, it, it is illogical that they would even go and make these arguments to the point where it's just like these people come off as insane. And it doesn't it doesn't make sense. And this is the main reason why I wanted to talk about this video. But before I go into my points, we're going to get a little bit farther in. I ain't going to even talk about it. You need to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's this guy. It's a white kid, man. I think the white liberal is the most dangerous creature on this planet. Didn't Malcolm X say that? <laughs> it's the most dangerous thing that's ever existed. Yeah. They could just burn down communities. Society I mean, would crumble if these people take over. Dangerous. I, I, just, to now man, we got some to fear mongering. Humankind. All right, look at you this. You love to see it? The phrase biological woman is completely meaningless because being a woman is a social state, not a biological one. Have we lost our minds? This guy is serious. I looked at his page. He's, he's dead serious. <laughs> I can't. You're trying to tell me that this is a social state? Are you serious? I mean, you... All right, so let's break it down. Uh, this dude says gender is a social construct and therefore it is different from sex because sex is not a social construct. This lady doesn't understand that and thought that he was saying that bi the biology is a social construct, which it's not. And, and that's that's how we arrive at this situation. When I watched this, because I, I watched this before, Right. So I, I can come pre prepared for this. What I what I realized while watching this is that. There's just such a fundamental misunderstanding of of these these topics because of the established language that we are already so accustomed to. I'm taking this class. It's about rhetorical theories. This is my textbook. Um theories of human communication and there was this theory linguistic relativity by spire wharf and it says in the highlighted section he coined the term linguistic relativity to suggest that worldview is related to language as much as much as it is to observable properties of the world and what this essentially means is that depending on how your language is constructed impacts how you view the world and the things around you. So, you know, this comes into, into play with like questions like if you had a society where in their language, a negation did not exist, a, a word to say no did not exist, what would that look like? What, what would people act like in this in this world, in this society? Well, I mean, they, they can't express that they don't want things. They they have to either ignore. A, a request if they don't want to do it, they have to either ignore it. They have to either subvert it, try to say, I would like to do this. However, I am going to do something else. I have to do this first. They, 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 they have to say anything but no. And, and you see, it creates a drastically different world, 
a drastically different way of viewing how we interact with social situations. That That is essentially what this theory is about. And I think that it can very much be applied to gender and how our language is with that. So in all of these people's heads, everything but like the, the TikToker, the, the dude TikToker, gender and sex is the same thing because our language, our English language has maintained this for most of its existence. It wasn't until around 1955 that we get John Money and um, there is this book called Fuckology and it was, uh, what was it, December, December 2014 that this came out. It's basically a a sort of summary of his work, a summary critique analysis of all of his work. But in 1955, uh, John Money, which he he's a controversial um, sexologist. He did some unethical experiments where he forcibly um, altered sexual anatomy of people. And he was a little bit too sympathetic towards pedophiles. But that's not what's relevant. What's important about John Money's work is the fact that he started the trend of differentiating sex and gender. This this is what I find most important about John Money. I, I understand he did terrible shit that he should get canceled for, I guess. But his work on pioneering like the development of language is very important. So I wanted to read about this. I wanted to read just this just this passage. In popular parlance, gender tends to either be used as interchangeable with sex or alternatively to refer to the social as opposed to the so-called biological or called sex. Aspects of femaleness and maleness in both cases, gender is a term that is commonly used to classify others and to refer to our own sense of ourselves as male or female, men or women, neither or both, despite the fact that such conceptions of gender feel self-evident, they are, in fact, relatively recent. It has been claimed by money and others that the first use of the term gender to refer to something other than feminine and masculine forms within language occurred in money's 1955 publications, Hermaphroditism, Gender, and Preciority. In hyperdrenocorticism psychologic findings. I am sorry if I absolutely butchered that. I can't read. <laughs> and co authored with uh, Joanne and John Hampson. Hermaphroditism recommendations concerning assignment of sex, change of sex, and psychological psychologic management. Indeed, it was through his early work with intersex patients that money came to consider the term sex inadequate to describe the lived embodiments of those whose anatomies are either discordant or do not appear to match the sex rules associated with masculinity or femininity and or the sense of self a particular individual has. So he was working with intersex people and just like gender nonconforming people. And he was like, the term sex does not explain the, the social phenomenons and social situations that these people are experiencing there. We need to we need to establish a different term because there's something there's something more to this. It is more than just. The sex that you have your bodily anatomy that determines who you are and then what defines your sense of self. There's something more to it. For money, intersexuality challenges the common sense idea. Like I said, common sense. This is 
This is the vernacular language, the way that English is formed. Idea that sex is naturally dichotomous is a biological characteristic that one that once determines genital morphology and can be determined with reference to that morphology and that sex roles naturally follow from genital morphology. So because of how our language is formed, this is what people think. People, people think of it just like this, and they've been thinking that for such a long time and are concordant with it. It is possible, writes Money, to have the genetical sex of a male, the gonadal sex of a male, the internal morphologic sex of a male, the external genital morphologic sex of a female, the hormonal pubertal sex of a female, the assigned sex of a female, and the gender role and identity of a female. Hence, Money's coining of the term gender, or more precisely, gender identity slash role, to refer to the multivariate character of the totality of masculinity and femininity, genital sex included, that each person attains even when the multiple aspects of the self as a man or a woman are seemingly discordant, so trans people. What we see here then is that for money, gender is not synonymous with sex as a set of biological variables, but nor are the five aspects of sex that he identifies in the above quote entirely separate from gender identity slash role. And um, yeah, that's that is what I wanted to read to you today. Sort of when we started distinguishing the differences between sex and gender and why this is such a big deal. You see, the way we're educated, we're not we're not taught any of this information. But despite that, it's true. It is true that gender is a social construct because the way that men and women act is arbitrarily decided by society and not by biological features such as the penis and the vagine. I don't know why I said vagine. I, I'm trying to be funny, but you get what I'm saying. It's a lot. It's it's a lot, and and uh, we're clearly witnessing um, the lack of education and, and what it does to the mind. You could tell he's serious by his eyebrows. <laughs> Bring, his, bring that picture back up. His eyebrows, you can tell he's serious. <laughs> Them eyebrows is serious, man. <laughs> that dude's eyebrows, man. Look like he drew him in there, didn't he? <laughs> you, look at a, you look up the definition of a white liberal, that should be the picture you see. <laughs> Modern day liberal. He to, said, to say that a woman a, is oh, yeah, a biological also, woman. He said biological woman is. Also, um, <laughs> they, they think that he's a liberal. I don't know this guy's political stance, right? But if, if you're a liberal, a neoliberal, because they, they said modern liberal, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume they mean neoliberal. If you're talking about that, <laughs> you're probably talking about someone like J Joe Biden. <laughs> Uh, he's probably more of a leftist, or at least leftist adjacent. He's he's probably further along than than a liberal. We're gonna we're gonna move on. It's a social construct. No, that's not what he said. He <laughs> bring it back up. Let's look at it again. That's... This dude make my head hurt. <laughs> he's biological woman is a meaningless woman phrase. Is completely meaningless. It's a meaningless phrase because sex does not equal gender. Woman, what woman is a gender term, female is a sex term. So you can say biological female and it'll make sense, but you can't say biological woman because women are not, <laughs> are not, uh, it's not a sexual thing. It's not like, your genitals determine whether you're a man or a woman. Your your chromosomes don't determine whether you're a man or a woman. They determine whether you're a male or a female. And that distinction is very important. 
That's because being a woman is a social state, not All right, that's biological. It. Yeah, see, that's what he said. That's, said. that's what he said. He said biological woman is a meaningless term. Yeah, he said it's a so it's, it's a, a, social, a social state. Wait a minute, what did he say? He says it's a social state. Bring that shit back up again. Man, you crazy as hell. You about as dumb as he is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break it up. What? And then they and then they struggle to understand what he's saying. Uh, At least two cups. <laughs> It's a whole lot of secrets. We're gonna skip a bit. <laughs> Titty, so she can feed a baby, man. Yeah, she can get pregnant. That's how gender was. Also, um, women women are baby making machines. Their ability to give birth uh, determines their womanhood. You know, you know, just like these sort of ideas that that have just not really been contested until recently. But the issue here is that. These people and a lot of people, most people, in fact, most people in our society, they're, they're not aware of the further knowledge that they can like expand, you know, what they know about on. They're, they're not aware of that. And a lot of them are not willing to learn about it. Right. That, that's a that's a huge problem we have to where it's like we have a bunch of people. There's this information that they need, and they need this because it helps validate a, a, a pretty significant group of people. If, if everyone knew that gender and sex were different, trans people would get treated a lot nicer. A lot nicer. And, and it would make a bunch of sense to people, and it wouldn't be so confusing. It would help a lot. It would really help a lot if, if most people understood the difference between sex and gender, because then trans people aren't like such an anomaly. But because we have this anti intellectualism going around where people are just unwilling to look deeper into things and learn about these things and learn that there is a difference and understand that. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't really know how else to fix this. There's only so many people I can educate or you can educate. I really don't know what to do, but what I can do is recognize that this is a significant problem because because if you follow these guys logic, you you have to you have to basically say I know everyone is a man or a woman because I have verified their chromosomes or genitalia or whatever, but that's not what they do. And that's where their logic fails, but they don't realize that. And then they don't care to look deeper into it. They're not really, tr I mean, that they are, they're, they're, they're simultaneously trying to make fun of this guy, but also saying, uh, this is, this is like going against common sense. So that's the argument. Uh, this guy's wrong because. I never bothered to look into what he was saying and consider if I was wrong. It's just what I've always known is right. I lived my whole life thinking that transgender people weren't valid and that it was impossible to change your gender because your sex is your gender. And once I learned about it, it made sense to me and it explained a lot of what I was struggling with and it helped me it helped me figure out who I am and if we just don't have access to this information we're gonna have a world that's a lot more dangerous a lot more hostile to people like me and uh that you know that that's kind of what I wanted to to hit with this video there's really not much else so um, even though even though the segment ended on the people that are not live, right, we have we have evidence. We have the original TikTok. Apparently, they cut him off and didn't actually listen to what he had to say and just said he was crazy and they didn't play the full video. And that's really bad faith. But we have it here. So we're going to watch the whole thing.
The phrase biological woman is completely meaningless because being a woman is a social state, not a biological one. Womanhood is socially constructed and as such it's not based on biology, it's based on societal recognition. It would be like saying I'm biologically an American citizen. It doesn't make any sense because American citizenship isn't based on biology, it's based on societal recognition. If the original commenter meant to say trans women aren't cis women, then yes, I agree. But the problem is, I don't know anyone who disagrees with that. Yeah, true. That that is it is very convenient that they did not talk about this. It's and and stuff like this also makes me like question if conservatives actually understand this and are just grifting because Ben Shapiro has been exposed to so much of this, so much of this stuff that like he has to he has to understand the arguments by now. I, he has to. But I don't know. I, I guess I guess the grift is just too good.